Okay, so today I'm going over another quantum field theory topic. This isn't really a topic. It's still more of a, a broad overview of the, top, of the subject, but I want to get into a little bit more details without actually going into the nitty-gritty calculations yet because when I was going through this kind of stuff, I found it often pretty difficult to understand and organize everything in my head. When I say everything, there's a lot of concepts that get that, that get thrown at you from day one on quantum field theory to commutators, anti-commutators, operators, Lagrangians, uh, propagators, and all this kind of stuff. And it's really, really, really overwhelming sometimes. And so I'm gonna, I do intend to take this slow. I do intend to take this uh, this playlist relatively slow so that we can really understand and organize these uh, these concepts in our in our in our mind okay so there's a video floating around on YouTube of Anthony Z who's a I believe that's his name he's a quantum field theorist he's um, by nature and he is he's a relatively good uh, teacher in the subject as well he makes things seem 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 understandable to a degree and this lecture on YouTube is about I want to say an hour and 15 minutes long and he asks the question why why quantum field theory this is an interesting question we have to be able to we have to be able to answer the question why before we dive in to the details because what's the point in diving into the details if there's no point right so and he provides a good overview on why QFT and then I'm going to so, sort of bring in this picture of that we developed in the first lecture on quantum field theory to make sense of this picture a little bit more this picture that, Anson, that Dr. Z presents to us so what he does first is that he he creates a grid and he says in this grid we often deal with fast objects and slow objects in in the world in the physical world and small objects and large objects okay and what and then we want to ask the question what type of what are the types of physics that drive these domains of the natural world and so in the large slow domain that's on the level of us when we say large we we mean humans uh, machines and stuff like that, this can be run, this is run by classical physics. Classical physics. Okay, on the large fast domain, so we're talking again large objects on you, me, uh, travelers in space, right? Uh, but at fast regions, at fast domains, we are dealing with special relativity. Special relativity. I'm spelling things wrong. Uh, this isn't a spelling class. This is physics class. <laughs> and then on the small range here, and slow, perhaps not slow, but on the small domain, we can deal with quantum. Quantum physics. I'll say physics. Physics. Okay. Although some objects in the slow domain are moving fast, right? And those objects in the slow domain that are moving fast. Uh, we want to sort of merge these two guys together. The idea of merging quantum uh, quantum physics with special relativity 
so that we can have objects that are moving fast, but objects that are also small. And this is where QFT comes into play. QFT. You know, just for completion, I'll write quantum. Quantum field theory. Okay. So this is the this is why we want quantum field theory. It's it, a quantum field theory will provide a good explanation or a good link between objects that are really small operating in a fast domain. Now let's bring back this picture of the field, this phase field that's described by that is described by our states psi and psi dot. Okay. These are states, so this is a phase field. And we established that at every location in this phase field, we specify each location in this phase field in terms of coordinates. And the coordinates uh, are given by states, not by actual locations in space and time, but they're given by states. And the states themselves are functions of space and time. So the phase field is sort of this two-dimensional field over sort of overlooking a four-dimensional field because these guys again are functions of time and space. All right, this guy is a function of time and space. But when we specify a point, we are specifying the position the the state and the chain and the derivative of the state. Okay. And then we said at each point we had Lagrangian. We had a Lagrangian. And we said that this was more or less uh, a function of the state and the derivative of the state. And then we said that well we also have these other types of phase fields that are scalar. Uh, this is a vector phase field. We, we can have scalar phase fields and we can have uh, tensor phase fields as well. Okay, now this is the field in quantum field theory. We're operating over a field of states and when we pick a location, where the, that's the state that we're looking at. So, so, so we, we've narrowed down on a particular state when we choose a point in this phase field, right? This isn't, a, again, this isn't a function of space and time, right? We're just looking at a state here. So say I, I, could, I, I, would, I could specify state, but again, this state is a function of space and time. So this is not a field in space and time. It's a field of, uh, of states and the states themselves are functions of space and time. Okay, so I can't be more repetitive about that. <laughs> so with that being said, there are other objects that live in here, right? Because we've established that this is, uh, this is kind of like a six-dimensional space because, um, or not a six-dimensional space. Uh, actually, because since each one here is a function of space and time, uh, this would be kind of like a, yeah, six-dimensional space because we have x, y, z, uh, but then we have x, y, z for x, y, and z, like that. Uh, and so since if we, we if we bring this all the way down to x, y, and z components for each one of these, well each, so there's two of them, there's this guy and this guy, 
but then these two have three uh, degrees of freedom. That gives us six degrees of freedom, or six dimensions, or six components. Right? Okay, but so, so what else? So what else uh, lives in this space? Well, operators. Okay, so an operator lives in at this particular point in this phase field. All right, so if we could pick, we pick a point in the phase field, we've picked a state, okay? So by picking a point in the phase field, we pick a state. Now we can operate on that state with any arbitrary operator. All right, so there's operators that are located in this space, okay? There's also commutators 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 are located in this space as well All right so this is so these guys here so these two guys are the big boys when it comes to quantum mechanics okay but then but this is where quantum field theory becomes useful. Okay, we, we say that the Lagrangian, so the Lagrangian is something that shows up in quantum field theory, but then we have, we could say we have a number of particles, a number of particles, I'll say number P, at each location in, fa in this phase field, All right? So you pick a state, okay, so we pick a state that's represented by some vector, this is sort of a a misnomer, if you will, it's not really the way to think about this, but you pick a state, right, and then you can ask the question, well, how many particles are at that given state, or, or have that given state? So we can pile in particles in here that all have similar states, and along this phase field, we have particles living at each point in this phase field. And this is why, this is one of the things that makes uh, quantum field theory so powerful. Right? Not only are we dealing with operators and, and commutators and stuff like that, we're operating with Lagrangians and numbers of particles at each location space. So say at this location space, there's three particles. At this location, there's uh, five particles. Uh, at this location, there's two particles. At this one, there might be ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that. We can have so so we we endow this space now with a number of particles. Okay, and this is this is kind of where the interesting physics comes into play. Okay, but again. Just to reiterate, for the sake of drilling this into our minds, we have operators and commutators. So I'll write those down. Operators and commutators. Okay. And, but we also have something else that I want to cover because this is going to be a big topic in quantum field theory as well. Suppose now I have, here's my field, and it looks like this. I'm making this big because I want to illustrate an uh, another very important concept in quantum field theory. So this is our phase field. Field. And say we are located here. Okay. At this location we have a we have a certain state. We have a certain state and we have a certain derivative of that state. And right here, we also have a, another state, we'll call it phi. And we want to know, how can we get from
from this state to this state. Okay, well, one option is to go this way, and then this way, and this way, this way, and then this way. The other option would be to go this way, this way, this way, this way, like this. Like that. We could also do uh, this. There's nothing stopping us from doing this. Oops. And there's nothing stopping us from doing. I'll do pink. Uh, like I can do this. So there's all these different paths that we can take. We, so here's that pink path. There's that pink one, and then uh, the blue one, if just for sake of visualization, looks like this. Uh, the green one goes like this. And this is, so there's all these different possible paths that we can take to get from one state to another state. Okay. And again, there might be four particles here and six particles here. Okay, um, and so this is the idea of the propagator, okay, the propagator, the Feynman propagate, propagator. So the propagator, so we have propagators, operators, and commutators. These are the big boys when it comes to quantum field theory and quantum mechanics. We can see now what the difference is between them. Propagators take us between states. Operators exist at each location in phase space and they help us operate on states uh, to get states that rep to, to get observables. And commutators are sort of like inner products between states. So there's a difference between all of these guys uh, but nevertheless, um, many of them are connected, okay? And what we will be able to see in quantum field theory and be able to elucidate is this, uh, is this concept, are these concepts of propagators, operators, and commutators, okay? And we're going to start off, and I want to take this slow and easy. So, and because quantum field theory, again, this is a difficult subject to take. Uh, and I think to, I think should be treated uh, with care and diligence. And so, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. I don't know if I'm going to do another biophysics one next, or if I'm going to do quantum field theory next. But if any of you guys have a preference, feel free to hit up my Patreon page and um, make a donation. And any donations you make, I will listen to accordingly. And so I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.